Okay, come on, John. We know we gotta do this football preview. Oh man. He's always on Twitter. Dude's not even on. Man, John is a hard man to find. Okay, come on, John. Come on, John. Come on, John. Come on. I'm sorry. You have one to Hey, John. What's wrong? Hey, Terry. Um, I man, I'm having a hard time finding John. So we can do our preview show, and then we might. Are we gonna do a show this year? I don't know. Uh, you think maybe he's changed his name? Changed his name. Well guys, thank you for all the viewership from On The John. This year's show is called The JS Report, known as The Jonathan Sturvet Report. All right guys, the look ahead for this week, week two edition. East at Arlington, Sheffield at Christian Brothers. That should be a great ball game between two ball teams. Douglas at Carville, St. Benedict at Cordova. Kip at FACS tonight. Briarcrest at Houston, the game of the week, in my opinion. St. George's at Jackson Christian. Them and Embo at Mufford. Germantown at MUS. Brighton at North Point. High scoring affair last year, could be this year as well. Bolton at Raleigh Egypt. Overton at Rosemark. ECS at Trinity. Covington at Jackson Northside. And Barlett High School makes that three hour bus drive to Hoover High School in Alabama. Is it JS before? Yeah. You didn't like the. <laughs> Alright guys, my take two of the week, some scores from last week, week one edition. Central Cordova, Central won 49-13. FACS took a chin, but they lost to Clarksville Academy 38-6. It just gets your team better throughout the season by playing those tough teams as well. Craigmont 30, Bolton 22, Innsworth 44, ECS 0, Good Passer 28. St. George is 19. Tipton Rosemark took a loss, but they lost 13 to 7 to Halls. Middleton, 25. Kirby, 13. Mufford, 28. Covington, 7. And then the game of the week was Germantown, 26. Christian Brothers, 20. Just the way that Germantown rallied and came back from 20 to 0 down and 20 to 3 at half. Now my take three edition, I got Thomas Sellers alongside me. Thomas, you were at the Covington Mufford game. Just yeah. talk about that game. I saw where turnovers started out early for Covington, but uh, Mufford just capitalized on it. Yeah, and uh, just good defense from Mufford. Everybody was talking about Mufford's speed coming into the year with the addition of Isaiah Cobb and Braxton Sharp, the Brighton transfer. And then you got Jordan Bell and uh, Jace Hodges who are already established. So everybody's looking forward to this offense, but I was really impressed with Mufford's defense. Covington has that three-prone running attack. It was neutralized the whole night. I was very impressed with their front line. And then my second biggest takeaway was Mumford's offensive line. That speed is not going to do anything. That line in front of them is not productive and pushing people out of the way. They made it look easy against a very good Covington team. So Mumford's a team to watch out for this year. You know, you talked about some players for Mumford. Mumford had a, a good game for Braxton Sharp. 28 carries for 150 yards, two touchdowns. Jordan Bell, the quarterback, five of eight. For 83 yards, then Isaiah Cobbs, a White Station transfer, and uh, came in and capitalized for five receptions for 83 yards and one touchdown. And like you said, Mufford's defense, with only three returning starters from last year's defense, capitalized and held Covington only seven points, who usually averages what 300 plus rushing yards a yes. game last year, yeah, and held them to, and held them to lesser than 200 yards. And um, Slade Calhoun, the head coach of Mufford predicated on defense. He likes offense and everything, but defense was his, his, his calling card. So I'm not surprised that their defense is gelled as quick. You know, got the M&M bowl coming up. Nuns is going to throw things at them, but a secondary be ready. This, the, the front seven was awesome. This week, the, the secondary is going to have to 
get ready for a challenge against Millington. And Thomas, you also went to the Millington Kirby game, and uh, Millington fans saw a different quarterback yeah. in this game as well, who pretty much, to me personally, for a first game at starting quarterback this season against a well-known team in Kirby, Cameron Perrier. Yeah. 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 So Passing 79 yards, rushing for 55 for two touchdowns, and then Jaden Williams, 11 carries for 75 for one touchdown. But good win for Coach Mike when the Trojans yeah, yeah. after last season. Uh, Darian George, the quarterback at Kirby, is one of those Memphis athletes that could just escape and do great things. They had to contain him. He broke loose for a couple big runs, but they did a pretty good job. But Cameron Perry, a sophomore at Melanton, he stepped in from a court pew, the junior quarterback who was nursing a shoulder injury, came in and can run the ball and, uh, and can pass and locate a couple guys. Look out for Blake Garner. He's a basketball player at Melanton, big tall target. That's going to be the guy that uh, Mumford might have to worry about in this game. And, you know, just to give some special teams, some players some love, Margo Tyson, a 74-yard for Bartlett, kickoff return against Pierre. Caden Williams, 89, kickoff return for St. Benedict. And then uh, Mr. Jamison for Brighton, 80 yards, kickoff return as well. But, hey, go out and support this week for high school football. All right, I guess Thomas ain't the only one that does the top 10 still. I'm going to do my top 10 pre, uh, for week two edition. Number one, I got Germantown. Number two, I got Briarcrest. Uh, that'll be a good game, Briarcrest at Houston this week. Germantown, like I said, does play at, at MUS, so that'll be a good game there. Uh, Houston is my number 13. Mufford, number four. MUS, number five. Carville, number six. Millington, number seven. Number eight, Brighton travels North Point like we just talked about earlier in a high scoring affair possibly. It was last year. And number nine, we got Bartlett travels to Hoover. But hey, uh, and then Covington, my number 10 spot at Jackson Northside. And we know how it is in Jackson. Now we look forward to Thomas's West 10, top 10. Hi, it's Thomas Ellis Jr. And we're back with on the, the JS report. I gotta get used to that. The Jazz Report, and I'm here with the West 10 Media Dynamic Power 10. Dynamic Physical Therapy, proud sponsor of this year's Power 10. The preseason poll, we had Carville at one, Covington number two, MUS was third, Germantown fourth, Mumford fifth, ECS was sixth, seventh, we had Briarcrest, Chris Brothers came in at eighth, ninth was Houston, and tenth was FACS. So, how did things shake out after week one? As we head into week two, our number 10 team is Covington. Took a tough loss to Mumford. They had Jackson Northside coming up this week. Number nine, Christian Brothers. The come from behind win by Germantown drops them down. They lost 26 to 20. They have Sheffield, should be a good bounce back game for them. Number eight, Millington. Very impressive against a good solid Kirby team, 25 to 13. Eminem Bowl this week. They travel up to Mumford. I'll be there. Number seven, the Bartlett Panthers. They took care of Pure Academy, 32 to six. Big special teams plays, good defense, but now they have to travel down to Hoover, Alabama and play an institution. Let's hope our boys come back okay. Number six, Houston, 1 0. They're taking on Brian Chris this week after a big 48 7 win over Ridgeway. And so, if Houston six, Brian Chris is fifth. Brian Chris at Houston after they took care of Booker T. Washington 54 6. We have another matchup in our top 10. Number four is MUS after beating Arlington 35 0. They have to travel to our number three team, Germantown. Once again, Germantown, that big comeback win over a good Christian Brothers team. So the game at MUS, that, I wish I could be at that game, but I got to be at the MM Bowl. But that should be a great showdown. Number two, the team that I'll be seeing this week, again, the Mumford Cougars, who beat Covington, their rivals 28-7, to snapping their losing streak, where they're losing 41-8, to 35 to nothing. They came out in a big way and took care of business, and they got our number two ranking. And remaining number one, our preseason number one, the Carville Dragons, who took care of Wooddale 47 to nothing. And they had, they had to head back home and take care of Douglas. <coughs> and um, let's see if Douglas will be game. The Red Devils are going to have a tough time. So we, this is our week two, heading into our week two top ten. The Power Ten presented by Dynamic Physical Therapy with two area locations at 8586 Highway 51 North in Millington and 973 Highway 51 North in Covington. And they have several other locations around town, and they're starting to build up. Uh, a following of uh, taking care of our kids and making sure that they're ready to compete on the field on Friday nights. And um, one guy that I know will be on a lot of fields throughout the season doing interviews and reports and making sure we got the top-notch information these kids get the proper attention they deserve will be John with the JS Report, and we'll see you next week.